Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're going to be doing the Grim Reapers review of the F16C module in DTS World. Now the first thing to point out is that we're doing this mid November 2020. It's not complete, it's still heavily in early access and hence we'll update this video when it's finished but that's probably over a year from now. I put this off for as long as I dare but you guys are asking me more and more to do it so let's get on with it. As ever, let's look at the structure of this review to make sure that it is empirical as we can make it. And I'll do my best to make it objective rather than subjective. So, one, we'll look at the capabilities at this time in early access, what you get for your money in terms of weapons, sensors, nav, and miscellaneous. Two, we'll look at the kinematic performance. All of the aircraft in DCS, I measure their kinematic attributes, their speeds, their accelerations, their climb rates, their roll rates, their turn rates, just about everything I could possibly think of. And I've got a whopping great database and we'll go and have a look at where the F-16C fits in. Three, we'll look at the visual effects inside the cockpit and outside of the aircraft. Four, sound effects, again, inside and outside. Five, interactivity and detail. This is how interactive the cockpit is overall, how many of the buttons work, how many of the MFD functions work, what are the systems like behind those functions, and so on. Six, we'll look at the flight model. Really difficult to do. It's very hard to be objective and not subjective about this, but we'll do our best to rate the flight model in terms of various parameters. Seven, a quick look at difficulty in terms of one to five. How difficult is this to learn where an A10C is extremely hard? So that's five out of five. Where a Christian Eagle is extremely easy, which is one out of five. And finally, eight, since this aircraft was released, what's the history been like? Has it been a buggy aircraft like some are? That's just real life. That's how it is. Or has it been relatively trouble free? And to keep things as empirical as possible, and to give you as much information as possible, points 3, 4, 5 and 6 will be rated between 1 and 5, where 5 is good, 1 is bad. And will be logged in a spreadsheet, which I will link to you in the video description, so you can compare this directly against all of the other aircraft. Note that I reserve the right to change my score at any time. And that is simply because I may change my mind when I learn a plane better, or I might change my mind and firm the score up a bit more. And as well as that, you won't just get my score. You'll see the score of the other Grim Reapers that have that module as well. And you can get an average score from that. And that is the best, most serious and sensible way we can do of reviewing the module quantitatively. So with that, let's crack on with capability. Okay guys, welcome to the F-16C Block 50 cockpit. First, let's look at weapons we've currently got in early access. So on the outer pylons, we can have and this is interesting, with this aircraft we can have the medium range missiles on the pylons. We can have an AIM-120B AMRAP or a C version, or a Lima, Mike or X-Ray, so that's a HOB version, of the AIM-9 Sidewinder or a training Capture 9M. Pods, we can have this uh, again training pod. And the next pylons in, we can have air-to-air -air missiles, exactly the same. And pods, again, training pod. Next pylon. We can have air-to-air -air missiles, exactly the same. But we can also have air-to-ground missiles, the AGM 88C Harm anti-radiation missile, as well as a series of AGM 65 Mavericks on Allow 117 or Allow 88. We have four versions, the Delta and the Gulf infrared sensor versions, or the Hotel and the Kilo optical guided versions. For the Delta and the Hotel, you can have an option of one, two, or three, as they are the smaller warheads. Cluster Bomb, the CBU-87 or the CBU-97, the more intelligent seeking version, and laser-guided GBU-10 or GBU-12, or unguided a slick Mark 82 or a Mark 82 Snake Eye or a Mark 82 Air or a Mark 84, a 2,000 pound variant. We also have a TER-9A rack that can feature multiples of what we talked about above, plus uh, three BDU-33 training bombs. Pods, a travel pod for your lunch or training. Rockets on allow three rack, 19 times 2.75 inch, 
with various warheads, high explosive, willy peat white phosphorus, high explosive anti-tank, white phosphorus again, and white phosphorus again. Then onto pylon 6, we can have the harm bombs, and these are the same as we just looked at before. Also, fuel tanks of 370 gallons each, pods, just a travel pod, and the same rockets we saw before. On the chin pods, as they're called, we've got five right. We can have, very important, we have the modern Lightning 2 targeting pod, and this is going to allow us for precision search and engagement air to ground. Center pylon, a fuel tank of 300 gallons, and a travel pod, and 5L is currently empty. Those are the weapons we can have. Also, we have the obligatory internal M61 20mm rotary cannon, air to air or air to ground, and we can have these different types of ammo for the gun. Might as well have a look at flare and chaff here. A pretty decent amount of 120 cartridges uh, separated however we like. Next, let's look at sensors. On the left screen, we can see the display for our radar. We have an air-to-air -air radar. We will also have an air-to-ground radar. The air-to-air -air radar is a modern, contemporary pulse Doppler radar with range while search and track while scan functions. This is coupled with an IFF interrogator. Note that in this aircraft, IFF symbology will be shown on the radar, but not in the HUD. Different to say, the Hornet. As with contemporary aircraft, using the track while scan feature allows us to send multiple AMRAMs out on multiple targets at the same time. We also have modern contemporary RWR, as you can see here. It's going to be pretty similar to anything from the 80s on era. We have full Link 16 data link, so we can share information with donors and surveillance aircraft. You can see on a HSD, I haven't got anything to show here, but we would show friendly aircraft, hostile aircraft, surveillance aircraft for optimal situational awareness and it's a pretty, although it's a small screen, it's a good HSD, good for situational awareness. In terms of sensors, we also have a radar altimeter. In terms of navigation, we have a modern EGI, so an INS inertial navigation with GPS. We can use coloured uh, MFD for navigation. We've also got a HSI, more traditional HSI down here. As well as that, we've got TAC and tactical air navigation to allow us to find, for instance, air to air refuelers and bases. We have an ILS, an instrument landing system for IFR approach and landing. That's bad visibility. And the model we've got here, it looks like we're also going to get ADF automatic direction finding for radio beacons at this time, not yet implemented. Some other features. The obligatory modern CMDS, a countermeasure system, currently chaff and flare, others are not relevant. And we can set these up in various methods of deployment, manual, semi-automatic, fully auto, and different programs of chaff and flare that we can program in. Although it says missile warning system here, the block, the model of aircraft that we have does not have a missile warning system. We do have a contemporary jammer here, just a white noise jammer in DCS currently not implemented but it will be obviously we have a helmet mounted display currently November 2020 only for air to air but we will gain air to ground functionality on it as well the rate for communications we have radios com1 com2 we've got control from UFC here we've also got control by a manual uh, UHF head down here we have good modern pilot copy interface through a UFC here and a DED here. So this UFC couples with this DED here. This is a readout and this is an input. General cockpit layout is two times multifunction screens displays here and traditional flight instruments here, engine and fuel instruments here with right console auxiliary, left console auxiliary. And finally, a good modern HUD, one of the best HUDs in DCS, in my opinion, it's based on its functionality and what it shows. Now we come to the kinematic comparison. We've got the different categories here, and unless told otherwise, all of these tests are done with an ISA environment with a drag index set to zero with 10% internal fuel load on the aircraft, fuel burn turned off, 
and it'll say if there's any other stipulations. First of all, low speed, maximum altitude. The absolute king, as ever, is the ADS-37 Mac 1.32. Then we've got the new uh, model of the Tomcat at 1.31. And then, and this was really surprising to me because I never thought the F-16C was so fast, but generally considered, it is a very accurately modeled in DCS. And we know that because we've compared it to the EM charts, the energy management charts of the real F-16C. Uh, and we've got third place, Mac 1.3. So it is incredibly fast. To get it that fast, remember, you have to strip your pylons off. As soon as you keep your pylons, your weapons mounts and stuff like that, then it gets much slower. Anyway, high altitude, maximum sustained and maximum dive instantaneous. We've got the MiG 29A, absolute king, a Mach 2.83. But remember, this is an FC3 plane, and these are simply not that realistic. That is just a false figure. F15 is just about right, we think, at 2.6. And the F16 is down here at Mac, when measured, of 2.01. And a max instantaneous dive at 32,000 of 2.09. Now, I actually thought it was going to go a bit faster than that, but that's just what we measured it at. We can't do any better than that. Next, low altitude acceleration from 300 to 650 knots. True speed. And we've got the new king is actually the F-16C at 15.12 seconds. Just clipping the uh, reigning champion, which was the F-15C. So, in terms of acceleration, low altitude, clean, remember, and a zero dragging dex. This is the fastest we can get. Now, in terms of acceleration for the real aircraft, I couldn't actually find any details on that. So you guys will have to let me know if you think this is realistic in terms of drag and power to weight ratios. But that's just how it is. Same test. True speed again, this time 15K. And we are not quite as fast this time. We are second though, 21 seconds and 68. So still it's pretty mighty. Next, climb rate, very important. And absolutely, this thing goes like a scolded cat. It's, it's crazy. It beat a MiG-29 in a climb. Nothing beats a MiG-29 in a climb. And not only did it beat it, it beat it by, uh, what, five, four seconds. I mean, that is ridiculous. Again, is it realistic? I couldn't find this particular information. This is climb rate from zero knots. This is what we call a QRA scramble. So you set the timer from zero and then you get up to 20,000 feet and you follow the same profile for each aircraft, same climb profile, and it's just so horrendously good. So kinematically, so far, it averages pretty much the best aircraft we've got. Uh, climb rate, slightly different test from, uh, where is it, from uh, 600 knots. This is a rolling start from sea level to... Uh, 20,000 and it is second place again just just clipped by the MiG-29 so really amazing stuff there next max sustain turn rate this is incredibly important and we do this test with a 50% gas load this test has a slightly different meaning and implication and so we've done it with 50% uh, gas load we've got uh, and this really interesting test F-14B is the reigning champion with 24 degrees per second with 30 degree flaps I think it was it was a high degree of flaps to get that much F-A-18C this is incredibly controversial and no one knows whether it's true or not because the EM charts for this aircraft are still classic I can't get them out of ED, I can't get them from anywhere. So we have, just have to assume they're right at 22. Now if we find the F-16, it is 20 degrees per second. Remember, 50% gas. So the 22.5 claimed by the real aircraft is with 10% gas. This is 50% gas, and therefore it is accurate. It is comparable with the actual real-life EM charts at 20 degrees per second. And that's just where it fits, just behind the JF-17, which we're not too sure about, uh, MiG-29 FA-18. Max sustained angle of attack uh, with the various parameters that we looked at. We found it here at 195 CAS and 23 degrees max sustainable angle of attack. If you want to know more about how I did these tests, I have a video for each test in the max aircraft performance playlist. You can go and look and see exactly how, why I did this particular test and how I performed it. Okay, uh, maximum altitude, instantaneous climb. We got the F-16, not too impressive, 88,000 feet and sustained, otherwise known as ceiling, where you actually perform a slight climb of 65,000 feet. Uh, we've got the roll rates. Now we've got different types of roll rates. You've got aileron slow, aileron fast, aileron rudder elevator, aileron and rudder. So it's quite complex, but let's just do a rough go through. So F-16 on aileron only at 300 knots is pretty bad at uh, 173 degrees per second. For whatever reason, it does not roll fast at 300 knots. 600 knots, 
217 degrees per second, aileron, rudder and elevator. So I guess you're going to call this a snap roll. And it improves seriously here at 186 degrees per second. Heavily fly-by-wire limited, obviously. You know, this, this everything here is going to be limited by the fly-by-wire. Uh, aileron and rudder, VW limited of 201 degrees per second. And that is the end of our kinematics. Overall speaking, it's a really high performer. Next, we're going to look at the visual effects and give it a rating. We'll look at the cockpit first, then the exterior model. Now, it is a bit of a dark cockpit, so just to help out, we're going to artificially turn the gamma up. Now, the best thing is, because this can be a bit subjective, the graphics, some people will like it, some people won't. If I zoom in, and I'm going to spend five or ten minutes just slowly panning around the cockpit, and you can make your own mind up about the textures, about the mesh, about the resolution of the textures. I think it's absolutely top-notch. I think this is probably along there with the best in DCS, which is going to be the F-14 Tomcat. I prefer this. I think this is better than the Hornet in terms of graphics inside. Love these kind of shag pile uh, seat textures that we get. I think it looks mega. You can see the little, you know, hairs coming out. It's done a really good job. This is, a, of course, a modern, you know, 2020 or 2019, you know, there's a modern module. So it is kind of what you would expect. Now, I always um, thought they'd done a really bad job in the F-16 module with this display. It looks very Nintendo 8-bit, if you know what I mean, really poor. But um, after I saw in a real F-16 cockpit, uh, not a real plane, but you know, a video of a real plane, this is exactly how it looks. It looks really cartoony, and the real one looks exactly like this, or maybe even worse in terms of you know the graphics. It's uh, really interesting. Shadows absolutely top notch. Uh, you see later when we're flying around, the shadows will move dynamically around the cockpit. Gauges, you know, however far I zoom in, that's as far as I can zoom in. You get no breakup of texture. Uh, which is pretty uh, top-notch. Wow, I've never even noticed. This is the first time I've even noticed this stuff. Look at that. You can see even the rust on the bolts. And the code numbers on the bolts and stuff. Turned at different angles. Never seen that before. Some serious attention to detail going on here. And the rough textures on the indicator lights stick tiny bit of break up there Look at the detail here with this kind of flange. It's amazing. A little bit of break up there. Love this seat belt and the great job on this, this, this uh, texture in there. Scoop around the other side. Give you a good eye full of what's available. So you can zoom right into these knobs here and you can't really see any polygons or anything so it must be a very high uh, triangle count. Thank you Red. Oh, that must be the panic button. I've never seen that before. Yes, it is. Let me. That's the panic button. Look. Huh. It's funny what you see when you actually take a good look around. Just the tiniest bit of breakup going on there.
Never noticed that bottle before. I never noticed this upstand here. I wonder what that does. That is, uh, I think that's your HMD. Oh, is it really? Sensor. How about that? Okay. So that's in the cockpit. I mean, that's basically as good as it gets in, in, in DCS at the moment, 2020. I'd say comparable, you know, roughly equal to Tomcat. Amazing, don't it? when you look down here, I've never seen this stuff before. Okay, uh, one thing I'd like to show you as well, I like to fly this aircraft with all my internal lights on. Yes, it's stupid, yes, it's unrealistic, but it gives a really cool glow. In fact, it's so bright today that it might not show very well, but um, no, it's a bit too bright today. It gives a cool green tint to everything. Um, uh, yeah, anyway, that's that. Now let's go and have a look outside. Those are your IFF uh, antennas. It's so definitely the best looking cockpit in DCS. The cockpit has a certain tint to it and it has a really high resolution to it. Um, sorry, canopy. I mean canopy, not the cockpit. Wow, have you seen this, the stuff happening in the landing gear when you do the nose wheel, I'll say? It's got these little actuators that move. I've never seen that before. I have seen that. Again, I've never, you know, it's just something you don't think about when you're busy at 500 knots on a multiplayer server. Now I've always had a bit of a problem, if I get my cursor up, let's try, with this area, this kind of the kind of back of the, I don't know what you call it, the top of the fuselage. The textures have never worked for me. It's, it's got better. It's got a lot better since they've released it. It's, it's just, I don't know if you know what I mean or not, RC, but this, that looks top notch, that looks top notch, that looks good, but this kind of back of the plane's never been perfect for me. But, I mean, it's not, it's, yeah. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm not saying, you know, it's, it's a great model all round, but there's always been something there that's just not quite worked for me, but maybe I'm just being really super picky, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that's very, that's, maybe it's a subjective thing, because I'm the only one that's ever complained about it, as far as I'm aware. Oh, it's got no tyre textures. Naughty Wagner. Have you seen that? It's got no tyre texture. Must be new. Or maybe it does and I just can't see it. Let's go and have a look at the... Uh... Well, let's carry on. I haven't finished yet. Is it the angle you're at? Maybe? Yeah, it might be. I'll go and have a look in a minute.
Gonna have a look behind. I love how that shadow's cast by the rudder, that's pretty... It's actually really clever, I don't know how they do that. Oh, I guess it's all done for them automatically, but... Oh, I've never looked in the jet pipe before. Oh, ho. you can see the you can see the turbine spinning. Too powerful for its own good. No, I really don't think there's any tire textures down there, RC. It's just it's just uh, jet black wherever I look. It's a shame. At least we found an error somewhere. So that shows the basic meshes inside and out. Obviously you've got animations for all these buttons and things to move. The only other thing I'd like to quickly show, if I can take off, is the kind of atmospheric effects when we pull high alpha, because it's really noticeable, probably more noticeable on this aircraft than any other. If you just try and get a high angle attack and you'll see what I mean. I mean, that is really super duper. I don't know, great, I don't, I don't know how you do that kind of effect. It must be a kind of smoke effect. But on this plane here, it looks absolutely top notch, doesn't it, RC? And the, and the Jeff 17. Presumably because of these kind of lurks areas here. Uh, that and it also got yeah. wing bend. So if you look there, it's subtle, but if you look there, the wing is actually bent as it gets loaded up by the hangar of attack. So that there is kind of a great shot there. So the rating for me, it's a clear five out of five. I rated the Hornet five. I rated the Tomcat five. So you know it's as high as it goes basically. Maybe those ratings will change as you know future years come and the graphics get better, and then it will make this look worse. But you know that's just how it is. I'll see you out of interest while I've got you on uh, rating out graphics one to five or zero to five. I guess it is four out of five. Ooh, controversial. Well, I'm not going to allow. Well, I'm yes. going to give it a five. It needs to be perfect, and those tires are not perfect. Fair enough. Fair enough. That as long as you've got a justification for your answer, which you have. Yeah. Then that's that. Uh, right, next we're going to go and look at the sounds. Let's reset. We are going to do this uh, based on parameters that we've done previously to keep it as objective as possible. Inside the cockpit, outside of the cockpit, we're going to do engine uh, spool and the total engine spectrum. We're going to do exterior flyby. We're going to do uh, interior sounds, angle of attack. We're going to do wind speed sounds we're going to do high g sounds we're going to do tire grumble and we're going to do various weapon noises so what we've got first is the engine this is a good point to say and i'll keep this as quick as i can i've interviewed lots of real life fighter pilots over the years and spoken to any the real life fighter pilot has three main senses visual sound i suppose they have spell as well but sound and feel of those three, the most important is not visual or sound, it's actually the feel. Most of the pilots I've spoken to fly the plane by the feel. The backup is the visual, uh, and I mean, not only tactically, but how you actually feel the plane and fly the plane. And then, and then the uh, sound. In DCS, we're virtual pilots. We don't have feel, so all of that has to be translated to us in purely visual, with no peripheral vision, just a 16 by 9 or a, I guess you could have a, a VR headset. 
and a basic sound system so it is incredibly important that the developers get the balance of the visuals correct the shaking of the cockpit uh, the the you know the the, the lurks um, smoke whatever you call it vapor that we saw there and the sounds and the sounds have got to be mixed right lots of planes in DCS have been ruined not ruined but are not as good as they could be because the sound mixes are wrong go and fly MiG-19 has almost no engine sound completely ruins the module for me so um, let's first of all look at the engine noise it's very important that um, you can hear the spool of the engine again the real pilot knows by the vibration we don't have that we have to know by the sound of the engine you know in a dogfight I cannot sit and look at my nozzle position so I have to know by the sound uh, disclaimer I've got my normal mission sounds as you can see there so nothing's been changed or cheated or edited so this is exactly as you'll hear it in a mission and this is my favorite engine sound in DCS I'll make no bones about that you can hear everything perfectly and it's a beautiful mix as well now I know you're gonna say oh you can change your sound settings I don't want to do that I shouldn't have to do that ED do it for me that's what I pay my early dollars for it's their responsibility to get it right Now that lovely big chunky afterburner, some of you might not have, it's actually an extra, optional extra which I love, uh, it is loud cockpit afterburner sound. So that inside for me is the best in DCS at the moment, some of you like Tomcat, Tomcat sounds I think are absolutely terrible, however uh, literally tomorrow we're getting a big update to the Tomcat sounds which is much needed. Uh, let's go and have a look outside. This is so powerful I'm not going to be able to hold this still, oh actually I might be able to. Not much of a transition from mill power into full burner there, which is disappointing. Let's try that again. See there? I must admit that's a real disappointment. I mean, you go to you, I go to RF Lakenheath and I watch the F-15s, and when they go from mill power to afterburner, there is a huge difference in externals. But there's nothing here. I can't notice any difference at all. Hadn't noticed that before, and to me, that's disappointing. Uh, right, so let's get st uh, whatever the opposite of static is, let's get dynamic, let's go and do the tyre rumble. I want to hear, because I can't feel, I want to hear the uh, tyre rumble. All we need is that afterburner um, um, bangy sound, but in the inside as well as the, uh, as well, on the outside as well as the inside. I, I can hear a good tire grumble, and it's a good. It's the the the, the mix is good with the engine sound. You hear that tire grumble? Not too much, not too little. Again, some planes got it wrong. Okay, that's good. Gear up. Next, wind speed. So listen at 200 knots. How does she sound in terms of wind speed? Wind speed in a real air, almost every real aircraft is a big thing. So listen. Hear that background noise that's growing? Altitude. 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 It's fine. It's fine. It's, it's easily discernible. It's good in the mix. It's not overpowering like some of my planes are just right in my opinion. Uh, next is going to be high alpha. No, high G. Let's do high G first. So Altitude. let's get rid of some high G and Altitude. listen. Oh, <laughs> sugar! <coughs> I'm a professional. Well, at least we get to hear the bla <laughs> the black house. Should we try that again, RC? I'll do it with afterburner on as well, because realistically, you'd have afterburner one in a high G. Or not necessarily true, but. It's a little low, isn't it? What I'm listening for is not just the angle of attack, but that to really let you know that it's obviously you've got the visual effect, but we're not talking about visual effect. It's a little low for me. I reckon that could be a little 
in real life in your helmet it would really be you know and you know that because you can go and watch the actual videos of of the cockpit recordings a little low in the mix there for me uh so be it. Next is high angle of attack. We were doing a bit of high angle of attack, but we're going to do more because high angle of attack is very important. Probably, you know, your most important thing to know in a almost any time, but especially in a fight, is uh, your angle of attack. Again, you a real pilot doesn't sit there and uh, and look at his angle of attack like that. He's looking like that at his lift vector. Um, we know this because we've been told this. So angle of attack is going to be transferred to us through, um, in this case, the sound and the mix of the sound. And uh, I'm just going to reduce our speed a little bit here because angle of attack comes easier with speed, low speed. Okay. You can see your angle of attack down at the bottom. It's called AO8. Uh, it's limited to about 26 degrees in this plane. Watch this. Massive angle of attack noise. Probably the highest, I think, possibly in DCS. Is that a function of this particular plane? Is that realistic? I don't know. But certainly in this aircraft, you can really hear the angle of attack well, which I think is important for the reasons I said. It is pretty much your most important parameter, um, you know, generally while fighting. If anything, I think it might come on a little bit too soon compared to other aircraft. Let's, let's watch again. So I'm just going to watch. So five degrees, six degrees. So it's pretty loud by 10 degrees. And very loud by, you know, kind of 26, kind of stool type territory. I think it's okay. I think it's just about right, to be honest. Uh, you may find it's a little bit loud for you, but because it is very important for the reasons I've talked about, I think that's pretty top notch. So let's do a couple of flybys then. As far as I'm aware, in fact, I don't know. I was about to say, I thought they might use the same sound as the F-18, but it may have changed and I may just have that wrong. So, let's have outside. And a flyby. Yeah, sounds pretty spot on. Afterburner. <laughs> That's too fast, this plane's too fast. Yeah, pretty decent, it's good sound of sounds, so I've got no complaints at all, uh, unlike some of the planes, so happy with that. Um, next, weapon noises. Oh god, uh, where's my gun on this thing? Oh, just added, literally uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week ago, a new gun sound for all of the M61s and uh, Avenger new, new gun sounds. Presumably uh, recorded from a cockpit somewhere. Very satisfying and very solid. It's got a really, listen to the clunkiness in the background. It really feels like you can hear the the, the, the interaction of the, the gun and the mounts and the, the airframe. As well as the actual gun sound. I can hear clunking. You hear that clunking? Oh, I'm out of ammo now. Anyway, uh, top notch. Uh, now, because I'm stupid, I didn't... Let's see if I can get these missiles to fire. Stand by. Oh, there you go. Oh, you can even see the wing flex slightly when that thing comes off. I don't know why it does that, but it, but it does anyway. Um, I'm not going to go through all the weapons because I'm starting to waste your guys' time now. But all the weapons have got the necessary clunks and whooshes and 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 ding -ding, you know when a bomb comes off. And it's I don't know how it sounds in a real cockpit because I'm not a real pilot, but it all sounds good enough for a virtual pilot to know that that thing has dropped and fired. So a Hornet, I rated 4.5 because it's it's good. It's up there. Um, the Tomcat, I rated. 3.5 at the time of making this it, it is terrible sounds in the tomcat the exterior but i know it's about to be fixed uh, because i'm used but that's what i've got so i'm gonna have to rate this almost perfection because it's got the benefit over the hornet is it's got that clear engine spool sound which you just don't get as much in the hornet so and i can't make it perfect i can't say it's five because i did spot a tiny little bit of error in there so i'm gonna say i know it's weird but 4.75 which brings us on to the next thing, the flight model. The flight model is it's really hard to talk about objectively, but I'm going to do my best. Now, luckily, I'm in a position where I have all of the modules, and because of how I do it, I fly pretty much all of them. Because this is a heavy fly-by-wire limited aircraft, it's an, a pretty much an unstable aircraft. It's controlled by what it can actually do and how it feels in many ways by the fly-by-wire. It means I can't really compare it with a non-fly-by-wire plane, like 
a Tomcat, like a MiG-19, like an F-86. I, I have to compare it against other fly-by-wire variants, like the F-18, like the JF-17, like the Mirage 2000. And the good thing to say is of all of the fly-by-wire limited aircraft, and I don't like fly-by-wire, by the way, I hate it. I find it easy, arcade, non-challenging, and a bit boring. But, you know, that's how the real aircraft is. This is not a downside about the module, per se. It's going to be my favourite out of all of them and the reason is again really hard to tell you why it's about the feel of the thing about how you connect it and how more importantly it's about how it tells you what it's doing for the reasons we spoke about earlier it's impo very important that the aircraft the module translates how it is reacting um, to speeds angle of attack stuff like that maneuvers that you're pulling to you through vibrations through the smoke through uh, the sound and stuff like that and we've got just the right amount of vibration and stuff like that and we see we've got your darkening there vibration there it's not too much going fly tomcat and it's you know it shakes you to pieces which i've heard is actually true from real tomcat pilots i find it a bit too much for a sim but i understand that i may be wrong i find this extremely well balanced and i find it very smooth as well now my understanding is is that this plane is probably the most fly-by-wire control planes of all the planes in dcs along with the jf-17 however for me it actually feels like the least uh, restricted the least controlled um uh, fly-by-wire controlled aircraft in dcs as compared to say the mirage 2000 just by how it feels and you're just gonna have to trust me on it really i've got no way of quantifying that to you i've got no chart that i can put up to show stick and book versus maneuver because you know i just don't understand it at the end of the day it's just flying this for hundreds of hours or whatever i've wrapped up in this aircraft i just know what it feels like let's go and have a quick uh, burn around this village at low speed high alpha i just had a comment from the stream the hornet's flyby wire is absolutely lifeless i agree that's exactly why um, I'm not, I don't like the Hornet's feel. It is, feels like a spaceship um, because it doesn't have... And again, we can't quantify that. I can't quantify it and the stream can't quantify it. It's only something that your brain can tell you. Whereas this is anything but lifeless. You can see it, be, you see it rocking around. It's giving me all the feedback I need to know that I'm pulling too much alpha and that things are going to go bad. Beautiful. Telling me I'm too high alpha, I'm too high alpha, and extending, the alpha's gone, hours on, the wind speed's getting up, everything just feels really top notch. So in terms of feel, along with the you know non-fly by wire planes, like you you know can take a spit out of P47 or something, it really does feel top notch. In terms of what you can get it to do, stunt wires and stuff like that, well pretty much nothing because the fly by wire is not gonna let you do much dangerous stuff. And see what we can do here. Oh, can we do a tail slide? Probably not. That's everything that fly by wire is saying. Look, look at it move. Look at it move those surfaces. I'm not commanding those rear surfaces. I'm a neutral stick. It's doing them for me because it's trying to get my nose down. <laughs> I may crash here, I must admit. Just put my nose down for me, and I may even pull out. Ah, how embarrassing for me. Anyway. I don't think you need me to go on and on there. Uh, now, that's actually a really interesting point. It has an angle of attack limiter of 26 degrees, and you can actually crash this plane quite easily because you do have that angle of attack limiter. The real aircraft has an override that allows you to pull, as far as I'm aware, infinite angle of attack. We don't have that function in our aircraft yet. I've got nothing really to add. I know that wasn't a particularly exhaustive, maybe not even a very professional view of the flyby, uh, sorry, of the flight model but I personally think it's top notch in the way that it feels and the way that it handles high speed the way that it handles low speed and uh, the way that it handles weather because remember we do you know stupid 200 mile an hour winds weather because we like testing things and pushing them to the limits everything reacts perfectly the landing gear react with the ground surfaces you know as far as I'm aware perfectly it slides nicely it doesn't feel blocky doesn't feel bad flight model so everything feels good uh, from the ground although it is challenging on the ground uh, it does tip over a lot um again that's the aircraft rather than the module is kind of that tricycle landing gear i guess you'd call it so you've got to be careful uh, it takes a while to master to take off and land okay i was just talking to rc on the stream behind the scenes there we can't really find anything there are i'm not saying there's no problems with this module at all but flight model which is what we're, we're rating it on now we can't find a single problem with it 
Um, so I'm probably, I think I'm going to vote that 5 out of 5. Uh, I'll see, out of interest, any, you fly it quite a bit, feel, how does uh, it feel for you? You have, what kind of score yeah. would you give it? Feels good, I would give it a 5 out of 5. 5 out of 5, how about five that? Yeah. Pretty good, guys. Okay, guys, next we're looking at interactivity in detail. This is all about how me, as a human, can interact with the machine. So, some modules in DCS, for instance, when there's two, two sides of this. A, how many controls are actually modeled here? How much actually work and do stuff? And as well as that, behind the buttons uh, and controls, how many of those background systems work? So at the top of the class, you'd have, for instance, an A10C. As far as I'm aware, every button in, in there, every dial switch works. You know, the ones that are available to work. You know, obviously you can't measure things like oxygen and stuff like that uh, within reason. And as well as that, there are so many background systems measured, uh, model for that A10C, probably more than any other uh, uh, system, uh, sorry, module in DCS. As you know, most of them you'll never probably even look at. I know I you know, find new ones every time I look at the A10C. So first we'll have a quick blast around the cockpit and really look if there's anything that's not modelled. I mean, things like little switches, that even if you can't model what they do, um, can't think of any uh, examples at the moment, but you should be able to at least press them and then have to have a, make a little sound and stuff like that. So go right back here. I can't even remember what all this stuff is, but you know it does it does whatever it's supposed to do. All this stuff is switchable, turnable, adjustable, various trims and stuff. Probably going to ruin the play now. All your lights, everything is doable. I can't remember something here that doesn't. Be careful what I press, I suppose. Yep, I knew I shouldn't have done that. All down here. Just had the complaint from the stream that um, these um, controls aren't modelled on the HOTAS. So, oh, stick's gone. Oh, uh, here and here. Um, that, you know, you don't actually click on these. What you do is you press the actual HOTAS button on your physical uh, stick. But the complaint is that the button, the knob, should actually turn. In fact, I better check that before I make that assumption. So, pressing the trigger. Yeah, that's correct. I'm pressing the trigger, but the trigger doesn't move. So that is one tiny thing. I've never actually thought about that until now. So, um, yeah, hat trim doesn't work. Uh, and, sorry, it's a bit loud, but in other aircraft, like, I'm just thinking of a uh, F-86 Sabre, I think, you know, you press the trim buttons up, down, left and right, and they actually move on the stick. Small things like that. There's some, there's some yeah. aircraft that, yeah, that it is animated and some that aren't Roger. kind of random. Yeah, and I know it's, it sounds a bit petty, but again, when you're paying for eighty dollars, that's a lot of money for a thing. Then it's the kind of thing that you know, it's the kind of thing that snags you a bit. And so it's you it's know, nice to have feedback. Like if you are pushing a trim hat switch, it's nice to be able to look at that stick and make sure you're pressing actually... it. Yeah, it's, no, it's a good idea. So right, so if it's not, it doesn't feel like it's trimming, right? Well, if you can see the actual trim thing going up, down, left, and right, then you know. Yeah. Just a little thing, yeah. Uh, just saying, other ones on the F5 and stuff do. So maybe, um, maybe that's something uh, a complaint we should put in, really. Um, and obviously, we'll highlight it in this video. Anyway, we'll move on. So that's the thing. Um, radio sounds, everything's working. I've just got to turn that volume down. Being stupid. Everything works around here. The radio head works as far as I can remember. I'm not going to press this stuff because it will blow the engine up probably. Uh, all this stuff works, works. Ah, finally, something that doesn't work. I oh, know it's not a button. That's why. <laughs> it's a fuse. Uh, finally, something that works. That pull handle doesn't work. Aha, got you, Mr. W. There. Uh, all around. CMDS all works, I remember. All this works. What's this? Ha 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 I'm silly. Hook. We haven't got a hook yet. That should work. But it's good to see the, even the, the animation's done. That animation there. Everything's going here. I've never even pressed these buttons. I can't actually remember what they do, but they work. Maybe they just clear those lights. Everything here. All these OSBs work, obviously. Uh, the those don't do anything. Huh? The ones on the side don't do anything. Roger. Uh, your stick wiggles, uh, your throttle moves, and your pedals wiggle. Uh, everything around here works. Everything on the UFC works. Everything around here works. Everything around here works. Right auxiliary or right console, I should say. Everything there, everything there, everything there. What's that works? That works. Nuclear consent, even the nuclear consent works, and obviously, you know, it's relevant, irrelevant. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't work. Bogachev. No. 
Ooh, no, the so nuclear that, consent switch does not switch. That's the thing that annoys me a little bit, though, because it wouldn't have taken them much time to model it. I know we don't have nuclear bombs on this, but, um, you know, it would be nice, again, paying you big money if you could move that switch, right? I mean, it wouldn't cost them very much to do that. No, it doesn't do anything, but, you know, that's when, that's why we're here doing this at the end of the day. I've just learned that is an up and down switch for the uh, seat. Yep. Never knew that. Wowza, that's cool. Okay, so we found a switch there that doesn't work. Uh, nothing's, I don't think that's meant to move, whatever it is. Um, I mean, it's always... A lot of this is not going to work. Environmental control. Well, some of it will, but... It's good that I can move, at least move the bits around. Even if some of them aren't modelled. Saying that, I think there's something there that's not modelled. No, maybe not. Uh, none of this is modelled, this is uh, radio encryption, none of it's modelled, but you can move the switches, right? So it makes me think, good, you know, Ragnar's put a lot of effort into it, it's worth my $80. Got some bits there, that's all modelled. So that's probably a 90, in terms of copy controls, I'll say it's a 99%er, uh, which is what the average for a good new module is. Um, just a couple of bits that aren't modelled in there. Again, this is early access, you know, but that's what I've got to work with. Uh, and the armrest should flip out of the way too. Armrest. Apparently this should flip out of the way too, and we can't do that. So in terms of systems behind these commands, um, and we can interact with a lot of them through the left MFD, right MFD, and the DED here. Now if I went to I mean, a list, I can get a, a, a main menu up, and there's other main menus. I'd say DED population at the moment, RC, how complete would you say it is? 50%? 40%? 80%? Oh, really? Oh, so there's... Yeah. Uh, there's okay. probably three to five that aren't populated yet. Right. Uh, for example, uh, VIP's not, mm -hmm. Destination's not, and a couple others on the other list. Okay, I'm going to find pretty much the same. With uh, these guys here, if we went back to a main menu, we've got TGP, which works if you've got a TGP. Fire control radar works. I don't think all of the commands are working, and it's, I don't think it's all in yet. But most of the, you know, the important stuff is in there. Weapon works with uh, AGM 65s at the moment. That's pretty much there. And 88. And 88. Uh, yep, right. Uh, TFR, no work. Fleur, if this even, ha even has a flirt, no. SMS does work. Um, HSD does work, whether it's fully populated, yeah, I'm not entirely sure, probably not, DTE, no, test, no, uh, FLCS, no, is there anything else, some other odds and sods that don't work there, so, I, I don't know what percentage is complete, somewhere, I think we're going to argue somewhere between sort of 50 and 80% by the sounds of it, I'll see. In terms of these kind of systems that we can in use. In terms of MFD or, or well, just total? Just, yeah, in terms of MFD and DED and UFC, I'll say somewhere between 50 the and 80. The thing that's not 100, that's 100 percent not working is the PFC, the pilot fault panel. Roger, uh, which is there. Oh, so right. that's, that's just not in at all at the moment. Yep, fine. Yeah. That's another example. So um, we've got to rate that. Now, there's no point conjecturing, you know, what it's going to be like when it's finished. We may as well just rate it as it is. So we've got, you know, we determined we're about 99% of these controls are model animated and pretty much do what they're supposed to do. Somewhere between 50 to 80% of these systems in the EMFD is in the DED, in the UFC, uh, the pilot uh, system here, maybe elsewhere I'm not even thinking about. So, uh, all being, I really want to rate it high because I do like the plane, but I should, it's, my job is to rate it actually. So I'm going to say 3.5 out of 5 all in as it stands at the moment, and obviously we'll change that when it's fully uh, completed. Your, any thoughts from you, RC? I'm going to go with a 3. A 3 for RC, okay, we're not far off. Next, we'll look at the difficulty. Not just the difficulty of flying the plane, I mean, that's one part of it, but also the difficulty in learning all or most of the systems, all or most of the weapons, all or most of the techniques. So you've got the whole spectrum to cover. So the most difficult uh, at the moment is the A-10C. I mean, it's not actually very difficult to fly at all, but there are so many systems, weapons, subsystems, sub-subsystems that you've got to learn. So many controls, HOTAS controls do so many things now difficulty it's hard and I know that because I can't do it I've learned it three times now and I still can't really fly it properly it means it's difficult to fly I'm sure a lot of you would agree so that's a five out of five 
other side of the spectrum, a CE2, where you can literally just take off and that's it, and land and do stunts, or an FC3 plane, where it's you know kind of really dumbed down, going towards arcade mode. That's a one out of five. Okay. A Hornet, out of interest, I and this is again subjective in a way. A Hornet, I put 4.5 out of five. Maybe I should bring that down to about four now. Thinking about it, because there's lots of systems, there's lots to learn, there's some subsystems to learn. Things like nav, there's a lot to it. There is a lot to it when you when you get in there. I mean, the plane's dead easy to fly, it flies itself, but the systems, there's a lot there, there's a lot of weapons to learn, it's going to take months of sitting down to learn a Hornet. This, as it stands, and that's key, this is as it stands, it's not how it's going to be, it is a little bit simpler than the, um, the Hornet, it's dead easy to fly, uh, take off and landing, a little bit tricky, so you, you have to get used to that, but it's dead easy to actually fly. Systems at the moment are like, what well, I would say, a dumbed down Hornet, as they stand at the moment, generally speaking. Um, and so I'm going to rate this difficulty 3.5 out of 5 in total to learn as it stands now. Remember, it's going to get a lot more complicated. They're going to bring more systems in and they're going to get more and more complicated. So it, I'll eventually see it ending up being a 4 or 4.5. But 3.5 as it stands, I'll see. Uh, any thoughts on that? Uh, 4. 3.5, 4. Right, so we come to our next field this is history this is all about the reliability of the module in the time that's been in service some have been in service for 13 years or longer some have been in service for just a few months this has been in service for what suppose well, it's about a year old now isn't it i think it was last november 2019 so this, yeah. is, this is about a year old maybe it was october just over a year in terms of comparisons probably the harrier is the most complained about i and it has i've had problems with it it's had lots of buggy. The TGP I found buggy, and it's ruined it a bit for that module for me. So I rate that. I rated that very low in terms of history. The uh, an example of a plane that's not very buggy. I mean, in contemporary times, something like uh, an A10C. I've had. I mean, it's bearing how minor complicated it is. How many bugs, serious bugs, have you actually known about the A10C RC? Data link didn't work no, for a while. It's also one of the first planes they've ever done. Yeah. So yeah, it's most complicated. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this F-16, I've had almost, there are, are some odds and sods, but actual real things that, you know, actually, you know, make you annoyed that you've spent your $80 on it, very little. Uh, if you remember the IFF went wrong at one point RC, and it meant we yeah. were IFFing, that annoyed us, we got over it, but it annoyed us and it's fixed now, obviously. I think we had a minor yeah. problem with the radar picking people up. Other than that, to be honest, I personally think they've done a great job. There were some complaints that it was released too early without enough features, and you know, that's up for you to decide. It's you know, subjective at the end of the day. Uh, but in terms of bugs, uh, we're just hearing from the stream at the moment, F-16 is better than the F-18 for bugs. Agreed. I would say it's better than the F-18 for bugs. So it's realistically not quite as good as the A-10C, but probably the next best down. Uh, in terms of goodness, in terms of how reliable it has been. Any differences or any thoughts on that RC? No. In summary, for me, it's my favourite, uh, this is subjective obviously, it's my favourite modern aircraft. It's the one I best want to fly. It's not the best. It can't, you know, outfire a Tomcat at long range, and it can't out dogfight, well, to be honest, a Tomcat at close range. In terms of um, the feel, and one thing I didn't mention earlier is the visibility. Uh, look how low the ridges of the cockpit are compared to an F... Well, compared to anything, compared to a Tomcat. Tomcat has massive structures up here. Makes it very hard to actually do your mission in some cases. This has a beautiful air of freedom. It makes the plane feel light, and it also I mean, it is light. Uh, aircraft and it's well modeled to feel light and so I have the best time in it it gives me the best feel-good factor and then mixed with the good sounds and dynamics that we looked at earlier it's just for me uh, it's the one I would like to fly most I can't fly all the time because it's my job if you like self-imposed job to fly all the different aircraft for you guys to show you them all but it's the one I would like to fly at the moment we are a little restricted they're a little slow in getting weapons in it's been out for a year we've got some weapons we've got the 88 that's come in we've got what else have we had I'll see We've got laser guided bombs, we've got yeah. no JDAMs at the moment, yeah. we've got AGM 65s, we've got some Mavericks, uh, but we really would like to see some more coming in now. Let's get the JDAMs in there and the, uh, you know, the INS GPS equivalents in there because they're lacking in that department and a few others as well and hopefully they'll, uh, they'll expand that uh, quicker. Otherwise it's a top bird for me. Um, anything you want to add Super RC? Nope. Oh, okay, I hope you enjoyed that review, we'll update it maybe a year's time and we'll see you later.